Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the June 2023 International A-Level Edexcel Statistics S1 paper. This question here is about um, mean and variance and coding of data as well. It says, Jim records the length L millimeters of 81 salmon. The data are coded using X equals L minus 600 and the following summary statistics are obtained. So N equals 81, that means that that's the number of salmon that were uh, re recorded. The sum of X is 3711. So the, the sum of the coded data, okay, is 3711. And the sum of X squared is 475,181. So that's the sum of the squares of the coded data. So for example, they, they took the lengths, and then they took the lengths, and they subtracted 600 for them, and they gave that gave X. So the sum of those x values, which are the l value after being coded, is given by this. And then they took the x values and squared them and then added them together and they got the sum of x squared. All right, so we want to find the mean length of the salmon. Okay, so what we could do here is we could find the mean length of the coded, the mean, the mean of the coded length of the salmon first, and then we can undo the code. All right, we can undo the code. So the mean length of the salmon, or the mean coded length, would be the sum of x over the number of entries, which is going to be 3711 over 81, which gives us, I'll leave it like that for now, because I, no need to round it. That is the mean, that is the coded mean. This is called the coded mean. The coded mean. Okay, we want to find the actual mean. Okay, we have to undo the code. To undo the code, you take the coded mean and you add 600 to it. You just simply add 600 to it. So it's going to be whatever we get from this and 600 added to it. Okay, so we take that value that we have and we simply add 600 to it. So we have 3711 over 81 um, plus 600 and that gives us 645.814, 645.814, it goes on. So therefore we can say that the mean length is 600 and 646 to 3SF. That's the mean length of the salmon, the actual mean length of the salmon, okay? And there's the answer to part A. Now for part B, it says find the variance of the length of the salmon. So we can do a very similar thing here. We can... Uh, find the variance of x. The variance of x is going to be, basically, as we know that the variance is the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Very important phrase to memorize. So the mean of the squares is going to be the, the sum of the squares divided by the number of entries minus the square of the mean, which is going to be the mean, which is the sum of the x terms divided by n, all squared. This is going to be the variance. The standard deviation would be the square root of this. This is the variance. So the variance of x is going to be the sum of x squared, which we know is 47, 475,181. 475,181 divided by 81 minus the square of the mean, which is... Um, for x is 3,711 3, over 81, and we've got to square that. And that will give us the variance, which is going to be, so let's work out what this is. You have 475,181 over 81. That's the uh, mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So we're going to take our mean, which is 3,711 divided by 81. And that's going to be squared. And that gives us our answer, which is 3767.438. 3767.438. Now, how does the coded variance compare to the actual variance? Well, the variance, okay, if the coding involves only subtraction, then the variance is not affected at all. Okay, when you have coding which involves um, subtraction, 
the mean is affected, but the variance is not affected. Why is that? Because the variance is, tells us about how spread out the data is. So, for example, if you had some sets of data, say, you know, one, two, three, four, and you to add one to each part of the data. So the code is you add one to each part of the data value. So the data values now become two, three, four, and five. Let's put that in a different color and do it a bit better than that. So the data values now become two, three, four, and five. Okay, so two, three, four, and five. We can see that the mean of the data has been increased by one. But the spread of the data is still the same. The spread of the data is still, the range is still three, right? So adding and subtracting doesn't affect the, the spread of the data. It only affects the mean. So the mean, we had to adjust it according to the coding. So we found the coded mean and we added, okay, we undid the code. So the coded mean was X, so we had to find L, so we had to add 600 to X, okay? So the coding is affected, the mean is affected by both any types of addition, subtraction, or multiplication and division. Whereas the variance is only affected by multiplication. Like, for example, if I multiplied each of these data values by 2, then I, have, I would get 2, 4, 6, 8, and the spread of the data would also be affected. It would be doubled as well. Okay, so from 1 to 4 became 2 to 8, it became 2 to 8, it's been, it's been um, doubled. Okay, the spread became from 3 to now 6. Okay, however... By addition and subtraction, the uh, coding doesn't affect the variance. So we can say the variance, therefore, let me go back to the color that I want. The variance, therefore, of L is going to be the same. 3, 7, 6. Oh, in fact, 3SF, 3, 7, 7, 0. 3, 7, 7, 0 to 3SF. Okay, it's unaffected. They're unaffected by that coding. Why? Because it only involves addition and subtraction. If it involved multiplication as well, then we would only uh, use the multiplication part to change the variance. Okay, so there's the answer to part B of this question. Now for part C, it says the weight W grams of each of the 81 salmon is recorded to the nearest gram. The recorded results for the 81 salmon are summarized in the blocks plot below. Okay, find the maximum number of salmon which have weights in the interval from 4,600 um, so W is greater than 4,600 and less than 7,700. So 4,600 actually happens to be exactly, looks like it, that's the mean, that's 4,500 here. Each of these is going to be 100, isn't it? Okay, that's 4,000 to 5,000. Each of these is 100. There's, uh, uh, there's, 10, there's 10 squares, each is 1,000. So that is actually 4,600 here. So the mean is 4,600, and 7,700 is the highest value. Okay, so we can say we can say that it's between the highest value and the mean. Okay, that's going to be 50% of the data. So 50% of the total number, which is 81, which is a 0 0.5 times 81, which is going to give you 40.5. So the maximum number of salmon that have weights in this interval is going to be 40 salmon. Okay, 40 salmon will be the maximum number that, that, that can be in this interval, okay, between, um, because, you, you know, 40.5 is not a complete uh, one, so you just write that 40, 40 salmon will be the maximum number of salmon that can have weights in this interval, between, it says, greater than 4,600 grams and up to 7,700 grams, so the answer here is 40, okay, so that's the maximum number of salmon that can have weights in this interval, and now for part D, it's going to be, it says, Raj says that the box plot is incorrect as Jim has not included outliers. For the, these data, an outlier is defined as, an, as a value which is more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above the upper quartile or 1.5 times the interquartile range below the lower quartile show that there are no outliers. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to work out what is the interquartile range. And that's going to be Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so that's the first thing we've got to work out. And and this tells you the value of Q3. And this tells you the value of Q1. So Q3 is going to be 5,400. So Q3 is 5,400. And Q1 is 
that's 3,500, 3,800. 3,800, that's Q1. Okay, so therefore the interquartile range is going to be 5,400 minus 3,800. Okay, so 5,400 minus 3,800 gives us 16,000. That's 1,600, sorry, 1,600. Okay. Extra zero there. Yeah, okay, good. 1600 or 1600 is in the quartile range. So let's look at the upper limit. The upper limit, okay, is going to be um, 1.5 times 1600, okay, plus the upper quartile, which is going to be 5400. So I keep writing an extra zero there. So you have 5400 plus that. So you have 1.5 multiplied by 1600. Add to that 5,400. That gives you 7,000. Okay, now this goes up to 7,700. Okay, so therefore we don't have any upper uh, quarter. So we can say that the 7,800 is greater than 7,700, okay, which is the upper limit, which is the highest, this is the highest value, the highest value, therefore, no outlier. There's no outlier on the upper side, no outlier on the upper, upper values. Okay, now for the lower limit. Now for the lower limit, what we'll see is it's going to be um the it's going to be q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range okay so q1 is we found q1 to be 3800 so we have 3800 minus 1.5 times our interquartile range which is 1600 and what does that give us let's have a look Is my calculator gone so you have 3,800, take away 1.5 times 1,600, that gives us 1,400. So the lower limit is 1,400, that's the lower limit. Okay, so let's have a look. 1,400 is over here, okay, and our lowest value is here, which is 1,600, 1, that's 1,500. So we can see that the lower limit, okay, the lower limit, which is 1,400, is less than 1,600, which is the lowest value. Therefore, no outliers. The lower side. Okay, so we can see that there are no outliers either on the lower values nor on the upper values okay so that's the conclusion there we've shown that there's no outliers because the limits are you know um, basically the limits for the outliers are within uh, the, within the range so for the top outlier it was 7800 which is over here, and there's nothing past that. That's like the boundary for the outlier. There's nothing past that. And here, the limit for the, uh, for the outliers was 1,400, and there's nothing less than that. So all the values are within the range such that there are no outliers. And that it concludes question number three from this paper. Um, other questions from this June 2023 S1 paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of um, I guess this is to do with um, mean, standard deviation, coding, and um, you know, outliers, quartiles, you'll find it in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link, and you can watch a video which will be linked over here, which teaches you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. 
Thank you for watching and see, see you soon.